So in this video, we are taking a look at a heat recovery steam generator in a combat cycle power plant combining a gas turbine topping cycle and steam turbine bottoming cycle. So this is how the simplest possible form of heat recovery steam gener generator would look like. We've got the simple cycle open gas turbine here. We're putting in 100 units of energy into the combustion chamber. We're able to produce 33 units of power from the generator and 66 remaining uh, goes to the heat recovery steam generator, which acts as our boiler. So we are producing superheated steam, but we are not burning anything. We are taking everything from the gas turbine exhaust gas. Okay, so from 66 units going in, we get 52 units with the steam into the steam turbine, producing a lot less power than we did in the gas turbine, but still good amount. We dump most of the energy out to the environment in the condenser, as we remember from the steam power plant lectures, and the condensate has some residual energy that we cycle back here. So basically the energy balance for the heat recovery steam generator, we're putting 60 in from here, 4 from here, so 70 goes in, and 70 should also go out, so 52 here, 18 here, that makes 70, so energy balance looks fine. Now, we notice a couple of differences compared to a typical steam boiler. So first of all, in the order of the heat transfer surfaces. Okay, we remember that in a typical steam boiler, the furnace is the place where we have the highest temperatures. And in fact, we have so high temperatures that we have to put the most effective cooling there, and the most effective cooling is by steam generator surfaces. And only after that we start to put uh, other heat transfer surfaces in reducing order of temperature. So first hottest flue gas to steam superheaters, which is the highest temperature in the steam cycle, and then economizer, and then air preheater. Well, here we are not burning anything, so we have no air preheaters. And we have steam superheaters, SH, as the first heat transfer surface. Because also our flue gas is not nearly as hot as the adiabatic flame temperature would be in a typical steam boiler furnace. So we don't have this uh, extreme cooling need, so we can get uh, heat transfer surfaces in a little bit more efficient uh, order in the sense that uh, we minimize the temperature difference over which we transfer heat. And then the other thing that we notice is that we have, in the steam cycle, we have no low pressure or high pressure preheaters. We have only the de-aerator, and even that one seems to look a little bit unusual. We have no steam extraction. We have actually a separate low pressure steam generator circuit here that we take water from the de-aerator, and then we uh, produce steam from that low pressure steam, and we use that steam to keep the saturated state in the de-aerator that we need to do. So why is that? The reason is that we are basically limited by heat transfer and temperature difference in how much we can cool the flue gas. So if we would start to add preheaters here, okay, our steam cycle efficiency, thermal efficiency of the steam cycle, that would increase. That always happens when we add preheating. But the overall plant efficiency would not increase because what would happen if we had more, if we had a couple of extractions here, preheating, we'd get warmer water in here, we'd have higher temperature, and we would not be able to cool the flue gas. So we'd get less mass flow rate, and basically, if we take a look, the temperature diagram goes, I think that explains us best why it doesn't make sense. So basically, uh, we are now already at a couple of points. We are fairly close in the steam cycle to the flue gas temperature. So this gray line is the flue gas temperature as we transfer more and more heat from the flue gas. It's colder and colder. And 
here we see increasing amount of energy that we can recover. We can see that we cannot really get the steam cycle any further to the left to make this flue gas loss, stack loss, any smaller. Because either this bit here or this bit here would poke through the flue gas temperature that will violate second law and it's the law so we can violate it. So basically as we approach here with our temperature to the flue gas temperature, the heat transfer area that we need to accomplish that approaches infinity. So there has to be a clear temperature difference here. And there's absolutely nothing we can do to recover this heat. And if we had preheating, we wouldn't start from this temperature, we'd be starting from somewhere here, and we would just lose even more heat, and basically then this whole line would operate with lower mass flow rate. So this is the basic idea. And with this kind of uh, very, very simple signal pressure level heat recovery steam generator and the related steam cycle, basically what happens is that approximately one third of the power is generated by steam turbine and two thirds by the gas turbine. Of course, depending a little bit about the process parameters, but thereabouts. And now the only way we can recover more heat is to start adding more pressure levels. So what that is something like this. So we add a low pressure steam cycle in addition to the high pressure steam cycle. And now here we see the kind of uh, process connections that accomplish this. So we see that we have deaerator, we have two feed water pumps, low pressure and high pressure. We've got two steam drums and their own steam generators, both for low pressure and high pressure. And we notice that some of the heat transfer surfaces, they are uh, in parallel. So for example, the low pressure and high pressure economizers, they are parallel <coughs> in the last part, the coldest part of the flue gas, flue gas flow. So we can see here that there are two dark blue lines. And the high pressure flow, that is clearly the greater mass flow rate. So basically with the amount of energy transferred, we get the kind of shallower slope and we don't get all that much heat. So then we have our second part of the low pressure economizer, which is at first adjacent, uh, what parallel, parallel with uh, uh, low pressure superheaters, and then we have the final economizer part. And this way we can, we can get much, much closer to the zero temperature. Now we are still not there, we could get even a little bit further if we added still a third pressure level and third pressure, uh, three pressure level combined cycle power plants do exist. We get just a little bit more, but that is as much as it basically makes sense to add. So if we would add four, yes, of course, four pressure level would produce slightly higher efficiency than three, but the addition would be so marginal that it would not be worth the extra complexity. So nobody has built or seriously even considered four pressure levels, but three pressure level is not even unusual. And basically the difference between heat recovery steam generator and a conventional steam boiler in terms of what limits our <coughs> stack temperature, how low we can bring it, is that here we are heat transfer and second law limited. In a typical steam boiler, we are usually not limited by those factors but by the fact that uh, our coldest heat transfer surfaces, we have, we usually want to make sure that there is no risk of uh, condensation in those parts, because if we are burning fossil fuels, typically condensation would uh, produce uh, sulfuric acid. If we are burning biomass, it would produce hydrochloric acid, and both will either require very expensive materials or produce quick corrosion. And neither one of those we want, so we keep temperatures high. Here, gas turbine flue gas, most of it is just unburnt air. And what is flue gas? There is next to no chlorine, sulfur, or any other nasty compounds. So basically we are 
we are not really limited by acid condensation here. As long as we have low sulfur fuel. If we have high sulfur fuel, then we start to be also limited. Not, not as badly as if we would have a furnace burning similar sulfur content fuel, but if we have a high sulfur fuel oil, for example, that we are burning here in the gas turbine, then it would start to make, uh, then it would be a little bit limited here, and then it would be start to make sense to add maybe one or two low pressure preheaters, because anyway, we can't cool it all the way down, so we might as well improve the efficiency a little bit here. Still, we would not have nearly as many uh, preheater stages as in a typical condensing power plant, simple steam cycle, but we might have a few. And this would be how it how it might look in this case. But uh, as I said, this is typically not the case. Usually we're burning natural gas, very little to no sulfur or light oil, again, typically very low sulfur. Now, one last thing, it was just mentioned that we basically have in the gas turbine flue gas, we have mostly unburnt air. What that means is that we can basically quite easily produce more temperature, more heat by additional firing after the expansion in the gas turbine turbine part. So basically the only thing we need to do is we add fuel injection, we have easily high enough temperature and enough oxygen that uh, the fuel will light when we just inject it into the flue gas hot and oxygen rich flue gas stream. So very simple, cheap investment can produce additional power. Disadvantage is that efficiency will be reduced. And now this might not be immediately obvious why it happens, but when we think about it a little bit, it becomes quite obvious. So this broadly similar type of plant, we have again the gas turbine here, 100 units of fuel in, but now our gas turbine is a little bit smaller, only 75 of the fuel goes to the gas turbine. Still same temperature of flue gas coming out, same efficiency, or at least about same efficiency, but 25 units of fuel goes to this additional firing and we raise the temperature of the flue gas stream before going into the heat recovery steam generator and the steam cycle. Now the question is, why does this reduce efficiency? And answer is that it reduces our average temperature of heat input. Why that happens is because our heat input happens in the basic without additional firing. All heat input happens here in the gas turbine combustion chamber, very high temperature. This is a much lower temperature. And in fact, even this temperature is not the average temperature of additional heat input. The average temperature of additional heat input is the temperature, average temperature of steam in here, because we're talking about heat input into the power cycle. And the power cycle experiences the temperature of the superheater, because this is just where the temperature, where the heat comes from. The relevant temperature is that of the power cycle, and that is only the steam. It makes no difference to the power cycle efficiency if we transfer heat into it with very high temperature gas and high temperature difference, small heat transfer area or very large heat transfer area and smaller temperature difference. But the power cycle efficiency, the only thing that matters is the temperature of the work fluid. And our temperature heat rejection remains the same. So thus average temperature of heat input goes down, heat rejection stays the same, efficiency must come down. And now as we add more and more uh, additional firing, our entire power cycle starts to resemble more and more a conventional steam power plant, then it starts to make sense to add more and more preheater stages, and our overall efficiency is going to approach the typical steam cycle efficiency more and more. So this is a very, very simple, inexpensive way of adding capacity of producing additional power with uh, little investment, but we must realize that if we want to take advantage of that, uh, it costs us in efficiency. So in a typical combined cycle power plant, you have the option of doing additional firing, but 
you typically wouldn't do it and your steam cycle would not look like this but it would be as is optimal for running it with no additional firing.